of the faith of the Christians of the early church. Simple faith. Uncomplicated faith. But unshakable faith. Mother Mary had a demonstrated to us remarkable fortitude and forbearance. Having gone through the crucible of all the trials and tribulations which would have broken any one of us into pieces, she emerged at the other hand, as those of you who spent time with her, smiling, joyful, praising God, singing to the very end. That takes incredible strength and faith for that to happen as it did in her case. And Mama Mary, many of you may not know this, because she was very understated and quite spoken. She had a steady fearlessness, unafraid, and Idi Amin discovered that. Because when Amin sent for the Archbishop of Namirem, a delegation to collect him and take him to State House in Jericho, the Archbishop said, I'm going alone. Mama said, no, no. I will have none of them. I am coming with you, no matter what. And the Archbishop lost the idea. Mama insisted, went with the Archbishop. On seeing Mama, he was so upset and agitated and berated her for coming uninvited. But we now know from all apparent evidence that the inconvenient presence of Mama Stopped Amin most likely from killing the Archbishop and the death. But the plan we had been to finish it then and then to stay a road accident on an Edinburgh. That was Mama, fearless, unafraid, when the occasion demanded it. You know, in the biography, it is said she had barely any experience of modern classroom. That is true. But she was so exposed, very widely exposed, and knew the ways of the whole world as an autodidact, which means somebody self-taught. But more important, Mama was deeply rooted in the culture, civilization of her people, the central world. She was so well versed in the history, the music, the poetry, the cuisine of the central world. And that was her strength. She knew who she was. And so I'm so happy to see that when we are escorting her, we shall not be moving silently and quietly. We shall be moving with a piri, with back, and with Buddha, because that is who she was. You know, I want to say this. Mama, there's no time to go into this town, but among the pioneers of the revival. You may not know today when you go to the Catholic Church, you go to the Anglican Church, you go to Pentecostals, you see African instruments, you hear beautiful African position praising God and worshiping. That was not the case not so long ago. Because the missionary said, praising God in our own composition, in our own musical form, using our own instrument, okay then, and a do was better. And Mama and the other pioneers said, no, thank you. Good Lord gave us these gifts. He didn't make a mistake. How can it be wrong for us to give back to him in praise and worship? So if today we have this day, we can jump up and sing and rejoice as Africans in the Catholic Church, in the Anglican Church, in the Pentecostal Church, it is thanks to the sacrifice and determination. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, Mama 
had a wonderful sense of humor. Wonderful sense of humor, a nice sense of humor. Those of you who were present in 2015 and we were, you remember, when people were giving testimony, that was their most somber. It was Mama's turn to give testimony. She realized the atmosphere was too somber. She decided to change tact and instead devoted her remarks to telling us in a very light-hearted, humorous way how she and the Archbishop first met and about their courtship. The place cracked up and the tension disappeared. That was Mama. <laughs> you know, for those of you who spent time with her, we know that she had a smile, but she also spoke with her eyes. Her eyes were always sparkling and smiling as she spoke to you. That was Mama. And I have to say this, that you know, Mama gave us an example of remarkable spirit of forgiveness and justice. Incredible spirit of forgiveness and justice. Which incidentally, a spirit she shared plentifully with the Archbishop because of the quintessential Maridano, a uniter and reconciler of people. The, the, the most recent example I can give was really God said, because some of you will remember the meeting in December last year, into February this year. A remarkable process began in Provoco ended up at Wingway, which was on the 16th of February. A delegation from Kobo came to see Mama on the 15th. She received them at her home in Kipu. They had a wonderful fellowship together. And while she was alive, fully aware of what she was doing, she herself presided over the giving of forgiveness and the opening of the way for the Because if this had happened next year, year after, she wouldn't have been here in person to bless this. Huh? In person to bless this. But let me say this in connection with that because this is very important. The Kakwa people are not responsible for the killing of our family. The people of West Nile are not responsible for the assassination of our so when the people of Kogoko came, they came in the spirit of African ethics and African cosmology, which is when one of your own has done a grievous wrong on a member of another community, you take responsibility first to acknowledge that wrong, and then to seek to reconnect the bonds of friendship, forgiveness, and reconciliation. That is what our brothers and sisters in Kogoko are doing. And that's the reason why in the field that we went, there was such an emotional scene that we embraced and cried together. The people of Kogoko, the Kakwabu, do not carry the burden of eating a meal. After all, you know, these are the people of Brother Sostiki Droid, the Great Evangelist, a companion of Mama Droid. It is Sostiki Droid who got little boy Olara from them, took him to her work, and I became a Lugara and a man from West Nile. <laughs> it is Kakwa people who gave us Archbishop Wani. It is Kakwa who gave us the legendary Archdeacon Droni, the brother of Evangelist Sostini Droni. So we should be clear about the meaning of that forgiveness and reconciliation. You know, Mama, <laughs> Mama had about her an incredible air of simplicity and authenticity. Our culture today, our new culture, exalts uh, composite and self-importance. It was always refreshing to be in our presence. Simple, straightforward, what you saw is what you got. We thank you, Mama, for that. <laughs> Let me say this. Mama was a no-nonsense person. You hear 
hear me? Yeah. She did not suffer fools gladly. She would bring the royal aunt to ask the children when we misbehaved. But more important, she was an equal opportunity dispenser of the royal aunt. As some of the high and exalted quickly discovered. That was my man. So I just want to say that we did not have the opportunity to say farewell to our father, Archbishop. We did not bury him. We did not even bond together when he was assassinated. So today and tomorrow is a poignant occasion. It is saying farewell to Mama, but it also recalls all the things that we were not able to do for the admission, that we now do for both of them as they are now reunited in heaven and will soon be reunited and we win. <laughs> finally, finally, let me say this, that Mama, in her own right, separate although linked with the Archbishop and her own right has given our country, our nation, the church, an incredible example, testimony, and a role model. That is what we honor today, that is what we shall honor tomorrow. We are a good simple man, the mama,